All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk today about identities, and in doing that, we're going to distinguish between the different meanings of the equal sign. So in math, the equal sign uh, can kind of mean different things depending on the context, so we're just going to look at that quickly now. Uh, one way the equal sign is used is here as a, just a statement of a mathematical fact, right? 1 plus 1 equals 2, uh, and that's a true statement. That's true today, it's true tomorrow. Um, and so the equal sign kind of is used to represent equivalent expressions like it, like it is here. Another way the equal sign is used, though, is here. Now, we can't say that the left side equals the right side always because it depends on the value of x, right? right for, so if x is 1, this is 1 squared plus 4, which is 5, and we have 5 equals 4. I mean, 5 equals 20. But that's not true. However, when x is... Uh, 4, then you get 4 squared plus 4 equals 20, and this is true. Or when x is negative 4, you also get the true statement. So this is true for some values of x. So this is called a conditional, conditional equation. Okay, it's, it's, whether it's true or false depends on, depends on the value of x. And then you have what we are, we're going to be focusing on this, this unit. Okay, this is an identity. It's true, right? x over x is true. Uh, it's true for all values of x that are in the domain. So like, view this left-hand side of an equation as a function, like f of x or something. And view the right-hand side as another function, g of x. These are the same for all values that are in the domain of both of them. So x divided by x definitely is 1 when x is numbers like 2, when x is numbers like 4, when x is a number like 1,000. It's always true, but it's not true for when x is 0 because 0 is not in the domain. Okay, so we'll just say it's a true... Uh, a true... statement for all values in the domain of both. One thing you're going to want to keep in mind is that that means that every time I see a 1, I can put an x over x and vice versa. Okay. So identities are what we're going to, and I, I spelled identity wrong here, yeah, it's kind of funny. Identity, okay, that's what we're going to focus on this term, or this unit. So there are some identities we already know, and the trig, the trig identities are what we're going to really be looking at, uh, this unit. So you should pause the video and mark these down, just so you have them. Um, we've already looked at them earlier, and uh, the, the, there's a couple you might want to note, they came up in some of the class activities, they're right here. Another one for tangent and cotangent. Okay, so these want to be you want to be you want to memorize them. You also want to be familiar with them. In other words, you want to know how to sort of use them, and that'll come up later in another video. Um, there's some new identities we're going to look at here. So, <clears throat> and these are called the Pythagorean identities. Identities. So here's our our sort of the the classic picture of our angle and standard position, and we know that, for instance, the sine of the angle, right, the sine of the angle in the picture is y over r. And we know that cosine of the angle equals x over r, which means that if we multiply both sides by r, I can say that r times the sine of theta is equal to y, and likewise I can multiply both sides by r here, and I can say that r times the cosine of theta is equal to x. Now why is that useful? Well, an interesting identity shows up. x, uh, this is uh, a right triangle, and by the Pythagorean theorem it means that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? But we can make a little substitution here. 
to make a little substitution and for x we're going to put r cosine theta. So rather than x squared it's r cosine theta squared plus and rather than a y squared I'm going to put what y is equal to r sine theta. squared, and that equals r squared. And so what's the big, what's the big, big idea? Well, first of all, r, r, uh, r times cosine squared, that's the same as r squared times cosine squared, right? Just like, you know, x times y squared is equal to x squared times y squared, right? So um, now here's how we write cosine squared. This is going to look a little funny. I know you're, it's natural to put the squared here, but because we don't want to, we don't want to make it look like just the angle is getting squared. It's the whole answer, cosine of theta getting squared. In math, they decided to put the squared in between the s and the theta. So, so that means, just as a little note, cosine squared. That means the same thing as cosine times cosine just less writing again and again this is like cosine times cosine okay that's just notation uh, plus r squared sine of theta squared same thing for sine and now what you'll notice is if I every term here has an r squared so if I just divide everything by r squared you get, well that divides, that divides, and this divides would be 1. You get a very, very common trig identity, which is cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, which most often is, is written with the sine squared first, but of course that we know that doesn't matter. So there is one key trig identity. Okay. Notice that means that means also you know you could re that's one identity, but also if you subtract cosine from both sides, you get this one. And if you subtract sine from both sides, you get this one. So I mean, once you get one down, you can kind of rearrange things. So that's another one. Um, so that's one trig identity. Now, if I take let's say I take uh, I take this here, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, and I divide both sides by, I'll write it down again, I'm going to divide both sides by uh, cosine squared. Why am I doing that? Well, because I'm going to get a new identity if I do. So I'm going to divide all, both sides, all pieces. Now watch what happens. I get, well, this right here is sine over cosine times sine over cosine, but that's just tangent, right, if you look at the identity on the last page. So that's tangent squared plus, that's just 1, and 1 over cosine is secant, and 1 over cosine squared would be secant squared. So there's another common trig identity. And then the last one we'll look at is we'll take the same same Pythagorean identity, but we'll divide both sides by sine squared instead. And of course, sine squared over sine squared is 1. Cosine squared over sine squared, well cosine over sine is cotangent, so cosine squared over sine squared is cotangent squared, and 1 over sine is cosecant. So we have yet another identity. And of course you can, you know, change these around too, subtract, you know, put the 1 on one side and subtract tangent squared, I won't do that here. Um, but the point is these are all, these are the main three. Trig uh, Pythagorean identities, and again, it's an identity 
which means that for all for all values of theta in the domain of of both sides here, this is a true statement. Right? This is a, so wherever I see sine squared plus cosine squared, I can put a one. I can substitute a one because they are identically equal. All right, so you're going to want to get familiar with these, and in the next video, we'll see how we actually use these.